There he is. All right, no biting. No biting. No biting. No biting. Just being a nice doggy. No scratching. My name's Jason Glade, I'm a photographer. I'm an artist from the north of England and my practice is, is predominantly um, based around photography and processes, uh, analog processes and printing processes. In this show, you can see my process very clearly, you know, and is definitely a reflection of my life at the moment, where I'm at, you know. I suppose I have an artist's life and I, I do, in terms of I do what I want to do, it's really, it's just work, it's a process of working through an idea to an end point or somewhere that you're really happy with which I suppose is these big prints here. And that's what this show is about actually, it's this process, the process of getting to somewhere. And my process of getting to these giant prints of flowers, dead flowers and, and people was, uh, was, it started with, with, with an old box of Polaroid that I, I shot. And, and then, and that was six years ago. So this has been a six year, development and I was quite high up. I was doing a lot of international campaigns and then I started having seizures, epileptic seizures. I was diagnosed as epileptic and that was when I was about 28. And that's when my practice shifted. Sure enough, commercial jobs dried up. I was having seizures on set. I had a team around me who would look after me. They knew if I was having a seizure, then the client wouldn't be freaking out. They would say, it's okay, he's fine, he'll be fine in a minute. So I was having these cluster seizures. It was a big challenge, but you, people have worse problems in their world and they get on with life. And, and that was my thing. And it was a little bit secret because it's, 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 it's epilepsy is something people have and people don't even realise. They might, I had people push me over in, in the street because they thought I was a crackhead or something, I was high and I would be having seizures on the, on the underground, you know, and if it wasn't for my dog, actually, who was always protecting me, but uh, it was a challenge. After this, basically, my, I tackled lots of projects, um, but it was in between uh, dealing with my illness, which was uh, the best part of um, 12 years or longer that I was having, I was really ill. Um, in that time, I did tons of work. I was doing, I did, a magazine, uh, four, four issues of a ma my own magazine called Freestyle Magazine that is um, round, fits inside a frisbee. Uh, we worked with Museum of Modern Art. Uh, we worked with Ili Kishimoto, Matthew Williamson, there was this DJ Spiller, Paul Smith, but these were all my own self-initiated projects. It's a long story, I don't want to bore you, but prior to this, I was very ill. I was in hospital for a long time, six months maybe. And in the hospital, I decided that I was, I was, I was going to build a shed so I could photograph in it. Uh, I was working with a designer, jewelry designer, and we were talking about doing a book. I said, well, yeah, I'll do that, but first I want to build a shed. And it was something about building a shed, actually, that really, Anyway, I started doing this shed project. I dismantled it in one part of London from the people. I bought it off and then I reassembled it in my garden. And then I changed it a little bit. I put stained glass inside. I put a beautiful old floor that I salvaged from a church around the corner. And it, it, I made this lovely space, little round windows and just, and then I started photographing. So that process started then. But what was important, it developed to here, but what I noticed was, as I was going ahead building the shed and doing all these processes, and it was very sort of labor intensive, I was not having any more seizures. And I could see a connection between me being well and actually working very focused. 
And that's how it's been for six years. And actually, I haven't had a seizure in six years. Working actually gives me a stability, and, and uh, in a mental health stability, you know. It puts me, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's very healing for me. It's, it's cathartic. And especially this subject, somehow, with the dead flowers and the people. I mean, photographing people alone is, is cathartic anyway for me as a photographer. I like to meet people in these times of lockdown and, and the, these last years, actually photographing the people was, was amazing. And prior to that, I was photographing flowers, uh, dead, you know, dried flowers. I was doing the time lapse in my studio in lockdown. And so I was dying to get out and photograph the people. I knew, I knew they would go together. They're not diptychs, but I do present a flower with a portrait, and that's, that's deliberate, you know. Um, and I pick, the, I pick the flower arrangements depending on the experience I've had with my subjects, talking to them. And with the flowers, well, I realised after, after these, all these years of doing it, that was one that I could have on my wall. Snippy, don't knock the camera. Snippy. <laughs> Come here, I'll have a cuddle. Come on. Come up here. You want your honker? You're not having it. No chance. Come here. Come here. Come here. You're not having it. You're not having the horn. No, you're not having the horn. The New Faces is a little reference to my, my history as a fashion photographer. So as a fashion photographer, uh, when you first start, the model agencies send you the New Faces. If you start to work for magazines and you start to get a bit of a profile, they send you better models. And then you get top models, right? When you're doing campaigns and stuff, you only work with, re you never work with New Faces. But an agent will call you and say, oh, listen, Jason, we've got this new face. She's amazing. He's amazing. You've got to see them. Can they come down to your studio? So you, 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 you see them. But actually, you don't want to photograph new faces. This is back, back in my old-fashioned history. But actually, I realised like, new faces are always very nervous. They, they're not confident with the camera because they haven't been photographed that much. But I realised for this, I need new faces because that's what I wanted. I wanted them to be nervous and a little bit uncomfortable. And so all the, all the portraits you see, most of, well, not all of them, mostly, most are not models actually, even better because they have even less experience in front of the camera. But some are models, but they're all new faces. And I just like that balancing it off against the flowers. It was, there was some, a little bit of tension there. Um, which you try, you don't want any pictures. I didn't want that before, but now I'm looking for it. It's quite funny, you know. So I contact model agencies and I'm saying, can you send me your new faces? And they think, oh, why do you want new faces? The flowers came because um, from something that a lot of people would already pass off and say is dead, you can create something beautiful and even perhaps more poignant, I would argue. And that's a little bit like analog. And also the practice of still life photography, still life anything, if you're a painter or whatever, you really have to concentrate. What, what I wanted to, to show, I want people to see, and I'm glad you've seen it, is that, is the, wow, there's a proper process here. In order for me to get to this picture, I had to make, make a, a gigantic picture of flowers, print it, have it on a wall drying, and then be ch doing another picture, changing negatives over, to go, wow, that looks good. And then going, right, how can I now make that on paper? How can I make a negative of that, what I'm seeing? And then I, I worked it out. I used brushes. And this also gave me that little bit of well, it, this, 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 where you have that space where a little bit of magic can happen between a mistake or 
a rush or you're feeling shit or you're, 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 you're stressed about something, actually, you can see it. I can anyway. And, um, you know, that's the process, right? That's the, all the steps you take is integral to what happens at the end. But what, with the way we, it seems everything is now, is everything's so instant. Instagram, insta this, insta whatever. And I wonder sometimes how much of that is lost. But to be honest, if I did a photo, in Photoshop, it'd take me two minutes. How fast we move, you know, and how fast we, how fast we consume images, actually, information. I mean, I'd love to be, have a million Instagram followers. I don't have that many, but I realise actually it's not, but that's where it's at. It depresses me when I look on the, on the underground and everyone has got their head on their phone. No one is engaging. It, it just depresses me. I don't have a smartphone. I don't judge anyone who does, but that's just the way we're at. And this was, it's so analogue. I mean, to do these big prints, you, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's pretty mental. There's nothing made in a, in, a, in a digital lab in this room. This is all done with chemicals and um, process like uh, printing processes. I've, I've thought a lot about formula over my years as a, as a photographer, as an artist, and what makes a good project. All I'll say, if there's anyone listening out there who's asked like that question you've asked me, don't force it. The only thing you can do is do exactly what you want to do. And what you think is cool. Trust yourself. Don't do it for uh, clients, actually. Do it for your loved one. Don't do it for Instagram. Do it for yourself.